It is NGN Radio, NGNRadio.com. It is Marcus in the morning, man. Continuing the artist spotlights, diving in deep in the faith, in the music, and in the genre of Christian hip hop. Uh, on it today, DJ Mike LV. What's happening, bro? What's up, my boy? How are you, man? Ple- pleasure uh, and honor to be here, man. Uh, likewise, likewise. Last saw you at Sierra Fest, turned up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it right here, right now. If people have not. Uh, saw it. I, I, I encourage them to go to your Instagram or Google Sierra Fest. It was a, a madhouse, man. But for those people uh, that don't know, uh, give me a little bit of background on DJ Mike LV. How long you been DJing? How long you been in the faith? Uh, the whole nine. Um, so I've been DJing for about uh, eight, almost nine years. Uh, I started uh, DJing when I was like a junior in high school, but was in love with hip hop and music uh, way before then. Um, Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Moved to Atlanta around 2015. And yeah, now I'm, I'm a full-time DJ. Um, I DJ for Lecrae, uh, No Big Deal, Dude Perfect, um, amongst many other people. Um, and I'm just trying to be uh, just a, 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 a pillar or a foundation for this new era of, of Christian hip hop. And I'm just trying to guide people to where God would have them. And um I came to the fair. I mean, I I would say I grew up in church, kind of, kind of not, sort of not really. Um, yeah, like me, just like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's like you go to church on Sundays with with your grandmother, and that's and you you grew up in church, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, I I kind of grew up in church, um, but I never really started actually following Christ, uh, like for real, for real, till I was about eighteen or nineteen. Um, yeah. Because I, I mean, I like I was saved technically, at like fifteen. But I didn't really start walking with the Lord until I was like 18, 19 years old. Bro, we could have probably hung out together because that is my exact story. Like, yeah, I yeah, went to church. Bro. I went to church and sang in the choir because grandma told me to. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then it took me becoming an adult and going off to college to find it myself. So I'm sure a lot of people watching this are probably shaking their head and raising their hand and saying, uh, me too. But, bro, when you, when you, when you, um, when you got into the faith and you got into the Christian hip hop side of of things, um, what what did you what did you look at that made made Christian hip hop attractive to you? Um, well, I didn't come in till late. Like I didn't come into Christian hip hop till late. Like I I'm not like a, a Christian hip hop connoisseur. <laughs> um, yeah, like because I came in like around Gravity. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I came yeah, in like around Gravity. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and like formerly known, and like okay. who is KB? Like right? Like that's when I came in. Yeah. And um, coming in from the world and stuff like that, um, and just coming in and seeing uh, how how that was going, I was like, man, this is dope. Like I would love to be a part of this. Like I'm a sneeze again. I really feel it. I, I it's like <laughs> it's like it's like it's like sneaking up on me like a like a left hook. I feel it. Um, Real life interviews, DJ Mike nah, LB. <laughs> Legit, DJ like, it's like it's like Mike Tyson right here on the corner about to hit me with a hook. I feel it. <laughs> oh man, but uh, and yeah, it was just I saw what was going on, man, and that was when like for me that was the golden era of Christian hip hop for me personally when when I came in because I'm like man, this is there was a lot going on, man. There was We Live as Kings. There was um, what's it called? Dream Junkies. There was all. It was uh, so much going on at once. And I was yeah. like, man, I'd love to be a part of this and kind of um, help push this forward um, in any way, in any capacity. Because I just believed in it. I was like, man, there was a lot of dope people that I rocked with, like Andy and Lecrae and KB and uh, Trip Lee, Tadashi, and Dream Drunk, all these people. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I would love to be a part of this somehow. So I kind of slowly started getting into the scene a little bit. Let me, I, want, I want you to do something different, man. Um because it's, every day is somebody new coming to the faith, and every day is somebody new finding out about CHH and that joy that you had when you first got in, and, and that feeling that you had when you was like, "Yo, this is dope." Um, talk to somebody, right? Look in the camera. Talk to somebody about the difference from coming from that mainstream lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like we both shared coming over to the faith, and and, and uh, why is it so sweeter on this side? Uh, and just like one hundred, so- one hundred. I mean, it's, sometimes it's not sweeter, to be honest. It's it's kind of like low key the same, but it's it's more so. Even though it's the same behind the scenes, sometimes it's more so the impact that you'll leave as opposed to in the world. Um, I think there's a bigger impact to be made in the Christian space um, to champion 
younger artists, producers, DJs, singers, artists, uh, managers, uh, radio personalities, etc. I, I think it's better to champion those um, because it, it's there's I feel like there's so much um, just influence lacking for us. Like I feel like so oftentimes we're we're very much so like oh nah like we're Christian so we're gonna be over here y'all do y'all when we should really be impacting culture like we shouldn't let culture impact us. So it's like I feel as though. I would put my eggs in the in the Christian basket more just so we can just champion people to be a more of an influence for this generation that's coming up. Yeah. What, what in your opinion, in your strongest opinion, what what does it take for us to move this genre of music and move the brand to where um it even becomes more appealing and more attractive to non-believers? Um I I think it's just doing things in excellence. So like content creation, um the music has to be good. Um, just simple things like that, like, and then just literally doing uh, your best to get those things out there, trusting in God and and putting these things into God's hands and allowing God to navigate um, navigate you in in in, in doing that. Um, I also feel like not everybody should be an artist. I feel like everybody wants to be an artist. Not everybody should be an artist. Everybody should kind of be like a manager or a booker or whatever, like things like that, like or, or podcasts or whatever. Like I feel like there's so many things that. Uh, we aren't in that are dope um, that we could be and we could kind of like just make great content and just great situations out of um, that could get us like uh, I don't want to say notice because I don't really care for that but we'll definitely get eyes on us like, as far as like oh man like yo they're, they're, this is great like how, how other niches are um, as far as like K-pop and like uh, you know like lo-fi like those are really great uh, cultures um, that are underground and have like niche fan bases and they're doing well too. I think the the, the thing that we have to do is um, just continue to make good music and 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 uh, push forward in that. Yeah, DJ Mike <coughs> V inside of Engine Radio, EngineRadio.com. Uh, my name is Marcus. In the morning, diving in deep on the faith uh, side of it, bro. Andy Trot, right? Yes, sir. Take us behind the scenes. Pull the curtains back. Uh, when you guys are not making dope music. When you guys are not on the road and, and making that dope content, uh, packing out shows, what is it like? It's dope. It's brotherhood. Like, we really, like, before we even came together, we were already friends for years. Like, before we came together as a group. Um, yeah, we like, we love each other. We, we value each other. We um, pray for each other. And we carry each other's burdens. And, and, and um, we just vibe off of each other, man. Like, it's really... It's dope. It's like it's like, it's like uh, when you was a kid and you would ask your mom to sleep over your cousin's house and you would get excited. Like that's how it is for us. Like we always like love being around each other. Like it's just always a good, uh, like a good situation. Yeah. And as you guys with and I, I don't know, I'm gonna dump, jump into the indie tribe. Boom. I'm gonna say it like that. I'm gonna jump into it. But as you guys are moving forward, like how is what is God saying to you? these days as the success and the buzz is getting uh, bigger and bigger. How's God uh, speaking to you? Um, I think God is just showing us that we have to continue to glorify him um, even in the success and continue to uh, I keep saying championing but that's like, I gotta find a different word but continue to <laughs> um, just be led by not only the spirit but by his, 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 his word. You feel me? So definitely um, ushering in a new generation of Christian hip hop artists, but yeah. also Christian hip hop artists that would continue to push the needle in creativity and continue to push the needle in, in just content and with what we talk about, but in a God glorifying way um, that is completely and utterly unashamed, like no nuance needed. Um, just catering to the people of God in that way. Bro, as as your name continues to get bigger and, and people are watching interviews like this and you're you're on with the guy from the radio station and everything man what made you not quit because somebody out there wants to quit whether it's their job or their their dream what made you not quit in those dark days man it it, it was it, it was hard sometimes man especially during covid and stuff like that um but what the thing that made me really not quit is the fact that that like my calling is bigger than me. Like mm. I, it's not like you know what I'm saying like I'm I'm called to do so much more than what Michael can do. Um, 
and I feel like the calling that God has put on my life has such a weight to it. I don't want to be like a, the the uh, guy that buries his talents or oh well it got too hard so I'm gonna leave. It's like nah, like God, God, I, I felt God pull me aside and tell me this is for me and He wants me to do this. So with that, like with with with, with being called to do that and and feeling as though God has called me to do this, um, yeah, it's just. I didn't quit because I knew that God wanted me to do this. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to give up on God. He didn't give up on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though it's hard, when it gets hard, and, it, and it, sometimes it gets extremely hard where I don't want to um, do certain things and I don't have inspiration, I just lean further into, like, the Father and His will. And I further lean into that um, and just be in His presence to to get that strength back to continue on because it does, it does get hard a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, DJ Michael V right here, Engine Radio uh, com. When you guys are being creative, speaking of yourself, when you when you going into your creative uh, rain man, when you going into your creativity moments, uh, where do you draw inspiration from? Man, I draw inspiration from like uh, just music, music, uh, movies. I, I'm a big movie guy. Love going to the movies. Um, yeah, mo- music, movies, and just moments in my life. Favorite movie of all time? I just gotta go. Favorite. Uh, you got uh, you got ooh, two hours to kill. What movie? Which movie? Uh, the Warriors. The Warriors or Do the Right Thing. Those are two of my favorites. Can you dig it? Yeah. Those are two of my favorites. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So 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 your creative space, man. Um, how often are 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 you tapping into that and and when you have that writer's block or when you get ready to DJ, where's the inspiration? You know coming from man so when 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 i get when i'm not inspired man i just rest because whenever i'm not inspired that means that i'm doing too much so i'm like i need to rest and just i need to intake more instead of give out so when you know when i intake more i'm able to give out more so whenever i have writers like i don't particularly write but whenever i have like creativity block where i can't really do certain things that i want to do i just i rest i just decompress and i'll either read or i'll play video games or i'll go work out or i'll go to the park or do something just decompress to get that inspiration um but also before djing um i get i just look at like the history of djing and christian hip-hop and djing and hip-hop period and i'm like man like i get to be a part of this story and and and, and whatever facet like even if it's small or big like i get to be a part of this and it's an it's honor and a privilege that i'm able to do this so let me go do it in excellence let me go do it with like good intention let me go do it with a joy um, and I just go out there and I, I just have fun, man. Like, um, like the stage is like my therapy, man. Yeah. Look, check this out. A- as a DJ, as a, your job is to make sure everybody in the building, everybody in the room is rocking and having a good time. Um, can you find a space to where you could DJ mainstream events and, and bring the faith to it or DJ faith-based events and and bring the same energy and swag that you would do in, in a mainstream event yeah bro that that's the thing about like um that's the dope thing about the like the way the way i do things is like i i do mostly like um non-christian events sometimes and i i'm able to bring in like a lot of christian hip-hop music in my set and people won't even know you know what i'm saying because i'm able to mix it in a way that's dope and i'm like okay like this is this is me doing my part as far as like getting people exposure and showing people that Christian hip hop is dope. Um, and also using my, the platform that I have that night and whatever situation that I'm DJing in, um, to, uh, uplift people or change people's mood, man. Music is a very powerful thing. Um, and you're able to change somebody's mood, outlook in life or the way they think, which is the play of a song, man. Like music is extremely powerful. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to do that. Even in Christian spaces, I'm able to um, do my thing with all Christian music and then still be dope and not kind of be corny in that in that way. Yeah. And when, and when the uh, – DJ Mike LV right here. Uh, and when the, when the lights are off, right, and uh, we, we leave the stage and we unplug everything, how are you when game is over? Man, you go home. You ride yeah. home in the car. Uh, are, 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 do you get away? Do you do you get away from the the industry for a while? And you know, yeah, like I try to like just video. chill, bro. Yeah, like I like like whenever like especially during tour, bro. When I'm on tour, that's like 
th- uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is tour. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, I have to myself, and I just try not to do music, nothing music related, because it's like I can get burnt out really quick if I, all I'm doing is music, music. I love it, but it's like to a certain degree, doing it all the time, it's not recommended. It just doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't give you that same joy if you do it for three months in a row. It's like, dang, this, I don't want to, it's kind of getting corny to me now. This is getting tiring. It's getting mundane, um, and to, to protect yeah. myself from burnout. And feeling like a like it's mundane. Um, when I do have my days off, I have my days off where I just don't do anything music wise. Bro, so give you a scenario real quick. We're walking through the mall. You and I, we're walking through the mall, and we see some non-believers, right? Yeah. We're, we don't necessarily know if they're Christian or not, but but everything about them says non-believers, right? Okay. If you get a chance to talk to that person. How do you come off? What is the correct way to kind of, in your opinion, what is the correct way to kind of come off? Um, I mean, so when it comes to like evangelizing and things of that nature, I'm not the type to be like, yo, do you know the Lord? Like, I'm not like that. I'm very much more of a like personable person. So like I would rather have a relationship with that person and allow my life and the way that I do things, the way that I treat people um, and through actual conversations of me getting to know them uh let the light and the holy spirit shine through me as opposed to going up to somebody random and being like yo you're an unbeliever let's talk about god like i just feel like that's not uh that's not getting the most out of the situation that's it's it's more so about having personal relations with them people because it's like that's what that's what jesus did as far as um disciples that he was in community with these people he was in 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 walking with them as opposed to um the disciples being like yo do you know the lord obviously (laughs) jesus you know i'm saying jesus will come up to people and change their lives in a a snap of a finger but when it comes to evangelizing and talking to people about god i would much rather uh have personal relations with them um because i've seen it work way more as opposed to just randomly going up to people and just doing stuff like that Last question, bro. Indie Tribe, where, where where are you guys trying to take this thing? What are your goals for Indie Tribe? Man, I think Indie Tribe is just to be, um, we want to be the voice of the culture, man. Like, we want to be the bridge in any way that we can. And like I said earlier, we want to keep pushing the needle forward uh, for creativity, uh, for honesty, loving uh, uh, loving the Lord through our music, um, and letting our light shine in, in, in a lot of uh, different spaces in and out of uh, the Christian scene. Um and I just think we want to just like I keep I, the, the word of the day is champion. <laughs> we just want to keep champion championing this generation and um, yeah, just carrying that torch. Love it, DJ Michael V. Um, man, you guys are doing. I, I first saw you doing your thing. Like I said, Sierra Fest, man, and, and I, I felt like ever since then, Indie Tribe has just been on the rise, man. And I'm watching your social media and the way you guys are moving. Continue to champion. <laughs> the culture, the genre, yes, and uh, everything else. Social media, man. Uh, real quick, how can people find you and, and follow some of this uh, dope content? Man, everything is at DJ Mike LV. Everything, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everything at DJ Mike LV. Real quick, so for the spell it for him, Mike LV. Uh, so the social media will be at D J M Y K A E L. The letter V. All over social media. All good. All good. All right, man. Appreciate you stopping through Engine Radio, EngineRadio.com, and hanging out with me, man. I'm Marcus in the morning, DJ Mike LV. Yes, sir. Thank you, man.